here's what I call the swine nutrition co confidence matrix. Okay. And um, again, I'm looking forward for a comments, questions, but I, again, I want to hear from you. Uh, hopefully I'm helping or providing some value, but also I'm a, I'm a learner. So I want to learn too. So keep the comments coming, right? Um, all right. So here we have boars, dew development, gestation, lactation. I even added a little bit of wind to asteroids interval, nursery and finishing. Okay. Um, and then I have feed intake, energy, crude protein, amino acids, phosphorus, cal uh, calphose ratio, sodium, minerals, vitamins. And I even added uh, the dietary electrolyte balance, which is basically a combination of sodium, potassium, and chloride in a given equation. There's a few different ways to measure that. Um, uh, we're going to touch on that here shortly. All right. So feed intake for, um, feed intake for boars. Um, I, I guess where I, I want to go with this is how, at least that's going to be my balance of the literature, okay? Where we are, okay? how confident we are, how do we understand a few of these areas? And maybe to give a little bit of a background story on this, I remember right off, after grad school, when I started working, I did, I, I, wrote, I wrote in a little, uh, what do you call the, a little note, uh, notepad, hey, I put this matrix and I was like, okay, what areas need research? And uh, I, in the ideal world, we would fill all these metrics with research. And I think we did an okay job. I think we did probably a third of it or maybe 40%. But, but, the, but, but beyond what we did, there's, of course, the whole uh, literature out there. So, I mean, Boris feed intake, there's some data from K-State uh, probably a decade ago. Uh, but the biggest thing there is, again, body condition. So I, I feel... I feel comfortable where we are with that today. It doesn't mean that, again, as any research would say, it doesn't mean that we wouldn't like more research, but it's probably okay because body condition is extremely important in boars. And I put between quotes here uh, because, again, when I think about body uh, feed intake, I'm thinking probably more of an energy balance. Of course, there's also protein involved, but that's that's where I'm going with this. Uh, gill development, feed intake. For example, should we restrict these gills? Or should we full feed them? Well, we've been saying for decades, right, that, that we should be full feeding the gills from birth to, to, um, to breeding. Well, that's what we do. It seemed to work okay. However, I was actually digging the literature a, uh, a few weeks ago and a little more in-depth on this topic, and I found a, a few studies from eight years ago or so where I was actually saying, look, actually if you restrict the guilt a little bit, it might be good. I'm not saying to restrict. I'm just saying that it's a little bit of a question mark. Um, okay. It's definitely an area that we want to learn more. Okay. Gestation. Well, that was part of my PhD. A bunch of studies uh, across the literature and after uh, my studies as well. My, the, the one study I had, and we had a few other ones uh, with Dr. Andre Malman, Dr. Greiner, um, and when it comes to feed intake, I, th I feel pretty confident, right? It's body condition. Bod body condition is what is important uh, for some folks because we're going to come back to this uh, here shortly, but there was a study in 1988 where they fasted the sows for um, one week or two weeks prior to farrowing. They only gave minerals and vitamins, uh, no proteins or, or energy, and uh, guess what happened? Uh, nothing, right? So the point is the cells really prioritize this fetus in late um, gestation, okay? Go, now, lactation. Um, you know, the, there's a handful of studies uh, showing what we believe today that it should be full feed, right? From the zero, uh, from farrowing to uh, winning, okay? So I put a little mark here. Um, and then uh, wind to asteroids interval. Um, there's been uh, three or four studies in the last few years. Um, uh, Dr. Leopoldo Almeida and um, Andre Malman did uh, one, I believe, as well. Who else did the studies on those areas? Uh, well, Dr. Um, Greiner and Amanda there, at the time they were at Carthage, they did as well. So 
this one, we I think we feel okay on this one at this point. And the, and the aspect here is that uh, those wind to atrus uh, females, they don't need as much feed as we usually thought. And I would challenge everyone here today. You know, I think if, if I would ask everyone here, I probably would get an 80 or 90% answer that we should full feed females in the wind, in wind to astros interval. However, show me the data because there is no data. The only data that I've seen saying that it should be full fed or that it helps, it's like a, it's a before and after, very weak studies, the one study. So it's not really a study, it's a before and after type of deal. And we're gonna talk about the, you know, the look, you know, how to look at evidence-based swine nutrition, right? So that's an interesting one. Nursery, uh, you know, we wanna full feed them, right? In finishing, we also want to full feed. Uh, in late finishing, there is probably, you know, Brazil, in Brazil, uh, folks, what they do in late finishing, they restrict uh, less than, than the voluntary feed intake than, say, U.S., for example. But the difference is also related to um, the flooring and the stocking density because the overall average feed intake during the finishing period is virtually the same. Uh, so that's why they restrict in Brazil. And a lot of times I get in conversation, say, well, in Brazil, it's restrict fat. In the U.S., it's full feed. Well, the full feed in the US, it's actually a little bit restricted because of stocking density. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but the, the challenge in the US, for example, when you try to restrict is that the pigs get very uh, excited about the, you know, about that and they and they might uh, destroy the feeders, for example. So it's gonna increase the maintenance. So you, you need to be um, careful on that. I say we are okay. It wouldn't hurt to have a, you know, a little more understanding on that late finishing. Do we get any benefits? Because those pigs eat a lot and, and probably more than they need, right? 